as Isabella mentioned, I got my start to my career in creative development for visual effects, thinking about how to express narrative for visual interfaces, and then transitioned into digital product design for IoT systems, thinking about and focused on how to interact with data without the need for a screen. And so since joining VaynerMedia, I've been able to merge these two disciplines to start thinking um, about and identifying emerging platforms for storytelling on one hand and communication on the other. And so I spend a lot of time thinking about the future of content creation and consumption and what the tools that we'll be using are going to be. Um, so creativity is an inherently human quality. It allows us to shift perspective, to come up with new ideas, and to empathize with others. There's a tension in this idea of a creative machine. And so as automated gener content generation systems become more prevalent, they should be demystified, especially for those who are non-technical content creators. This century, there are two platforms that have tremendously impacted the way that we consume and create content. We have the ability to interact with the world's information at the touch of a button on our mobile phones, or uh, at the ease of conversation through voice user interfaces. And this is all um, content on demand, in context, in the moment. And that's a huge opportunity for content creators and experience designers to deliver contextual relevance, to deliver experiences that have the right information at the right time for an audience. But of course, contextual relevance at scale requires a ton of variation in content, iterations um, that can meet the user where they are, whether it's based on um, time of day, user preferences, geolocation, et cetera. And variations in content creation sound like a great job for an AI. But what does it mean to introduce AI into the creative process? What is the right balance between human input and automation and at what cost? Perhaps by using creative fields as a sort of starting point, we can create a proxy for um, other industries, creativity being the sort of most human um, we can get to. This is a little drawing robot I created that uh, detected primitive shapes using computer vision and then replicated them in its own interpretation. But to start, let's look at how uh, AI is perceived in pop culture. It's often represented as the personification of computation, as the replication of human consciousness and emotion. General AI is presumed to be not only possible, but inevitable, and it has the motivation to destroy us. I mean, what else makes a great sci-fi movie? But the truth is a lot less dramatic. Um, we have AI integrated into our daily lives in um, every way, so much so that it's become <coughs> invisible to us. Uh, more so in the form of automated, very domain-specific tasks uh, that are very repetitive, like spam filtering or recommendation engines for movies and music, um, or anomaly detection in our credit card spending to detect fraud. But you're probably thinking, what about Sophia? She's on the conference circuit. She might even be here in the audience right now. Um, Super interesting projects, but uh, as the face of progress in AI, it can be misleading or a distraction from the types of conversations that we should be having um, as a productive sort of uh, way of thinking about things. So let's look at a few theories about our future with AI um, from some thought leaders in the space. Ray Kurzweil, father of the singularity movement, of course, thinks that by the year 2045, we will become one with the AI that we've created. He also happened to collaborate with um, artists and musicians like Stevie Wonder on the invention of the Kurzweil synthesizer, among many other things. Elon Musk is a little bit more pessimistic about our future with AI. He's so concerned, um, he thinks that it could be our greatest existential threat. And so he's created a company that researches and produces brain-computer interfaces. If you can't be beat them, join them. And Paul Allen, the late co-founder of Microsoft, was a bit more concerned with how we can apply the AI of today as a foundation for a better future. He thought that uh, personified, self-aware AI um, was pretty far off in the distance um, because it lacked a fundamental quality that humans have, and that's common sense. 
If you look at the headlines today, you'll probably think, well, AI is already taking over creative fields, among others, in uh, journalism, fashion design, painting, um, other fields. But there's something missing, at least from these headlines, and that's the human decision making that goes into data curation and algorithm design. Um, without emphasizing these human decisions, we lose the ability to scrutinize uh, how they're made. So um, there are interesting uh, research projects that should be looked at when we think about how AI and creati creativity come together. A project that came out of a Finland university attempted to create a rap lyric generator. And so they recombined uh, lyrics from over 104 different artists, including Vanilla Ice and Nicki Minaj and Wu-Tang Clan. Extremely interesting, but uh, when a hip hop artist was asked by Bloomberg what he thought of the lyrics, he said that the lyrics that the computer generated were not hot lyrics. Um, and so this could be one of many anecdotes about how AI is incapable of creating quality content, um, or it could be a call for artists, musicians, designers to become more involved in the design of the algorithms that touch their fields of expertise. So I wonder how many hip hop artists were involved in uh, giving input and in how the data should be curated and algorithms should be designed for this lyrical um, rhyme generator. Just as any re recipe, the outcome is only as good as the ingredients. If ingredients aren't uh, understood, how they should be combined and how to complement one another. And if the final product, ha uh, there's no vision for how that should be, um, the outcome is probably not going to be consumable. And artists have employed something that looks a little bit like algorithmic design in their processes long before computers. So we have collage from Picasso, we have cut-up techniques from William S. Burroughs and others more recently, David Bowie, Kurt Cobain, Tom York. Um, William S. Burroughs actually sent this uh, uh, cut-up poem to a friend with a letter that instructed him on how to employ the technique himself, which is a sort of pseudo uh, code for how to um, generate a poem. And artists and designers today use AI in their processes every day, so much so that those things uh, that algorithms perform are no longer uh, seen to uh, require much intelligence at all. They've become invisible to our processes. And of course, new AI tools are coming about um, every day in, uh, in terms of dynamic modification and creation of content. And these pose new questions about how AI applications should be applied um, and what the appropriate ways of using them are. So as automated content creation becomes more prevalent, um, we should encourage both content creators and consumers to become aware uh, of how those decisions are made in the creation of these algorithms and how the systems that uh, are automated work. The challenge is that as we have more automated content systems, um, we'll have the promise of efficiency in order to uh, generate likes at the cost of transparency um, and scrutiny. And this means that our automated content generation systems could lack consideration for creative concept um, and quality, and they can also lack empathy for an audience, and that's not a place that we want to be. So if we celebrate the human decision making that goes into algorithmic design, um, and we highlight the human agency and celebrate it, uh, then we place the content creator who's interested in incorporating AI into their processes as having um, an even more critical role as the designer of a framework that becomes flexible enough to meet the user where they are um, and become contextually relevant. We need creative people to become more interested in and knowledgeable about AI systems, not only to retain the human intent in the uh, things that are produced out of creative fields, but in the application of AI more generally. After all, the systems that we design today are gonna impact uh, and define how our relationships are with technology tomorrow. Thank you.